Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Iyer. Today we are uh, joining Professor Subhash Kak, and he is going to tell us about a friend he knew for many years. This person is very special. His name is E. C. George Sudarshan. He was nominated for the Nobel Prize as many as nine times, but he never got it. Now, to know a little bit more about him and a few other things that you might find very interesting. Let's join Professor Subhash Kak. Professor Kak, welcome to P Guru's channel. Thank you, Sri. Uh, I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak about uh, my friend uh, George Sudarshan, a very great physicist of the past 100 years. Uh, he got his PhD from Syracuse, and he did uh, uh, a theory on uh, weak theory, uh, weak force. You know, there are. Uh, four different forces, electromagnetics, weak, strong, and gravitation. So he was one of the pioneers in explaining the weak force. And that itself should have uh, won him the Nobel Prize. And then he also worked on quantum optics, where also some other people won the Nobel Prize and he got left out, even though he was mentioned uh, as being uh, one of the seminal sources for those ideas. But you know, ultimately, these prizes are forgotten. He stands much taller than the Nobel Prize. And uh, another of his uh, interests uh, was Vedanta. So I met him several times at Vedanta Congresses, which used to be held regularly in uh, Athens, Ohio, and at other locations. And when he first met me, he was uh, very intrigued. He says, well, uh, your name is Kark, your last name is Kark. And he said, one uh, gentleman named Ramachandra Kark had a very important influence on his life. So I asked him how. He said, well, you know, uh, Ramachandra Kark, uh, who's a distant relative, was the prime minister of Kashmir from 1945 to 47. And he was on the wrong side of Jawaharlal Nehru. And so when uh, uh, India became independent, um, uh, he persuaded the Maharaja to fire him. But, um, but he was still uh, around and he was um, interested in what was going on in the world. And in the 1960s, when uh, George Sudarshan was a very, very young person and already world famous, um, Ramchandra Kak invited him to his uh, place in, uh, outside of Srinagar, a place called Dachigam. And he spent about a week and there they had many opportunities to converse. And Ramachandra Kak told him that, look, I'm an archaeologist and I have devoted my life to archaeology and I used to go around uh, the valley uh, and in the JNK state looking at old monuments. And one day I chanced across a Swami and this Swami looked at me and he said, you would become the prime minister of Jammu and Kashmir state. So I said, how is it possible? I'm a How old was he, sir? How old was he at that time? This must have been in the 1920s. Maybe he was about... 30 or so, 30, 35, wow, wow. very young. Hmm. And so he said, there he realized and in that flash moment, because it did come to pass, uh, that um, when it happened, that indeed there are things greater than what meet the eye. And this story had a great impact. Um, George Sudarshan told me on his own life. And it opened up, maybe not by itself, but it helped his other thinking on what the ultimate uh, nature of reality is. And of course, uh, the view that uh, all reality is nothing but matter and all these particles going back and forth and out of which appear molecules and then biology and consciousness could not be it. Because uh, as we know, uh, the, the Vedic um, uh, approach to reality, which is also, of course, summarized in Vedanta, is that the underlying ground stuff, ground stuff of reality is consciousness itself, is chetana, out of which emerges everything. And in any way, in the lived life, consciousness and materiality are like two parallel things. And this is also the interpretation of quantum mechanics given by its own pioneers like Schrodinger, who were inspired by Vedanta. In fact, Schrodinger, one of the two 
creators of quantum mechanics said that the Upanishadic Mahavakya, I am Atma Brahma, that this Atman is Brahman, this small thing is the entire cosmos, was the central push which led him to the idea that uh, uh, reality should consist of superpositions. And he was able to formulate that mathematically. So uh, George Sudarshan was a wonderful uh, raconteur, storyteller. He was great at um, standing up and telling stories about not just physics, but also about Vedanta, about uh, Indian wisdom, about the Puranas, about Shankara, because he was from Kerala. He was a Malayali. Yes, he was from Kottayam. Yeah, please continue. Yeah. yeah. Certainly, George Sudarshan needs to be praised and lauded even more than what he has already been. And uh, knowing him has been a great privilege. And uh, I regret that during the last five, seven years, I was not able to go to his 80th birthday celebration in Austin. And, uh, and after that, didn't get a chance to visit Austin once again. So I regret that I did not meet him as often as I should have, but, uh, but you know, such is life. Yes, and he passed away last year, uh, rest in peace, uh, Sudarshanji. And, and see, these, these are the kind of stories that we come across where, you know, it doesn't matter what religion you're professing, but the Sanatana Dharma, the underlying pinning, the underlying foundations, these are thousands of years old. And it's just for us to go and seek this. And, and that enriches you. And, and, you know, you are absolutely right. You know, we have such a treasure trove we just don't seem to want to know or realize or, or appreciate what we have. And, and I'm hoping that somewhere, you know, this, uh, this epiphany happens, this nirvana happens, and people say, okay, this is what we really need to do. And as a country, not only that, but to the whole world, India can provide that spiritual leadership. And, and some things have happened, sir. I mean, we shouldn't say completely not happened. I mean, yoga is one of the gifts that came from this. And then that has been, you know, completely, ado uh, uh, you know, adopted all over the world now. People believe in the goodness of yoga. And then there are other things like breathing exercises, pranayama, you know. So that is happening. And also, I mean, I have become a firm believer in Ayurveda for the last few years now. I completely swear by it. Because what it has done is it has reduced my other challenges in life. I mean, as you grow older, you need to, you know, you need to do a little bit more than just stay in place, you know. Flu seems to hit you more, uh, you know, mosquito bites seem to get you, you know, uh, uh, whatever. I mean, you, you, you see where I'm going with it, right? I, and, and you travel frequently to India. So you, you know what I'm talking about. We, we don't want to get vulnerable when we get, grow older. And for these things, Ayurveda has some excellent remedies. So thank you very much, Professor Kar. Perhaps you can uh, tell me what exactly is your relationship with uh, uh, Ramachandra Kak, is he like on your mother's side, father's side? I'm just curious. Well, uh, Kak is one of uh, the families, if you will, you know, people, the same last name. Hmm. And um, Ramachandra Kak uh, uh, commissioned uh, a scholar to come up with a genealogy, with a tree. And uh, that book is with me, and uh, our Kak family is also in that big tree. So oh, we wow. are uh, we are part of a large uh, family group, which goes back to at least three, 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 four hundred years in that particular tree. Now, prior to that, in Kalahan's uh, Raj Tarangini, which yes. is written I think about eleven thirty or so, there is the story of a general named Tilak Raj. Hmm. But sadly, he ended up at the losing end of it. On the losing side. <laughs> Such things do happen. And losses should only inspire one to greater effort. <laughs> That's <laughs> the way as far as I am concerned. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Professor Kark. And, uh, you know, talking with you is always uh, as a pleasure. It's uh, you know, it opens my eyes to new things. And, and who said that you cannot learn after a certain age? That is not true at all. We continue to learn. We continue to evolve. We continue to become, you know, more complete as a person. And as we grow older, we realize that we don't know anything. The more we grow older, the more we realize we know nothing. But thank you very much, Professor Khan. 
Oh, just before we conclude, uh, yes. one uh, little uh, item. Two weeks ago, I was in Banaras, and there was this uh, conference, uh, which was called a dialogue between Vedic and modern sciences. And uh, there were uh, different subgroups, and Ayurveda was one of those topics, and uh, Paryavaran, which, meaning, which means environment, and physics, and this and that. And I think all of that is for the good, and we need to do it uh, with uh, total use of the critical method. Yes. We want the critical method to be applied and uh, what is uh, still of value uh, would then uh, re-emerge as it should and perhaps uh, help us uh, situate ourselves much more effectively uh, in our current uh, moment where you know, there's so much of uh, uncertainty in the world. Yes. Thank you very much. Really enjoy talking to you, Sri. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll be back with more such interesting discussions. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar.